Hey, this is Dave from metalepidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. It's that time again, gentlemen. It is album review time. And uh, for this review, Duncan, Kyle and I have been checking out the new album from Canada's Seven, Nines and Tens. The band's new album, Over Opiated in a Forest of Whispering Speakers, um, is out January 7th on Willowtip Records. So, um, this is album number three from Seven's Seven Nines and Tens. Um, the album was written by David Cotton, who does uh, guitar and vocals. It was uh, recorded at Rain City Recorders in Vancouver, and uh, then produced by David Cotton, uh, Matt Roach, and Adam V, and then mixed and mastered by Adam V. Um, I'd never heard of these guys before. Uh, totally new to me. Um, I thought but, this was how they that this was their scoring for rating how attractive they looked, <laughs> and I want I want to I want to find out which one in the band's a seven, because <laughs> uh, I feel he's selling himself short. <laughs> well, they are they are a three piece, so that would make sense. All oh, yeah. right, so someone's a seven, one's a nine, <laughs> and, and 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 someone's very cocky, strutting about scoring himself a ten. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, they're um they're signed to Willow Tip Records though, um which was what kind of piqued my interest initially um i do really like the stuff that they put out um so when they started kind of posting about this i was like oh this could be interesting we'll need to have a little listen to this um and and it's a definitely a, an interesting album um i'm not even sure like 100 percent sure what genre this is like it's it's very difficult to pigeonhole these guys mm -hmm. um i mean it's it definitely it definitely has elements of like shoegaze and Post rock, um, but it's got a very kind of progressive feel at times as well. Um, well it's leaving a, a little kind of slight tinge of sludge in there. Yeah, yeah. A, kind of just a slight well, element, yeah. element of sludge. Um, um, actually, the very first track, um, "Popular Delusions," I actually did get a little bit of a almost kind of mountaineer type, mm -hmm. kind of dreamy, kind of post metal kind of vibe as well. Um, but again, I can't really like outright say they sound like one particular band. Um, there are little elements, little moments that will remind me of another band. Don Walker's another one that kind of came to mind a bit. Um, but they don't sound like any of those bands. It's quite strange. Um, and that's that's great. You know, it's, it's great for the band to have that unique sound. Um, but it's uh, a pain in the, the dick titties for us to try and like put in the words. Pain in the dick titties. The dick titties, did, yeah. Did you, did you see dick titties? Dick titties, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we might have to look at your dick later on. Just to make sure. Right. <laughs> I'm just going to say no, no, those aren't those aren't titties. Balls are basically dick titties. That's basically. Ah, oh, right. So you put nipples on them. You milk them. You milk them, Greg. You milk them. You. You milk it. Can you milk me. Um, I'd say meet the Falkers by the yeah, way. Meet the Falkers. Yeah, just in that. case anyone's like Duncan's face is bent like Robert De Niro's. <laughs> um, all impacted and shit. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's kind of it's, it's a pain. But it's a it's a good pain because yeah. I think that you could all this is like a cluster grenade in terms of all the bands you could mention that you've already mentioned and the ones we haven't even got to yet yeah. that could be inroads to listen to them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would even go as far as to say, and this is where you two will get upset. There are elements of Smashing Pumpkins on this. There is there is elements of Smashing Pumpkins on this on some of the guitar work specifically and some of the guitar sim. Okay. I can handle um, that. I can handle that. Uh, no, no vocally. Not, no. not. Uh, the, the, no, no, if Billy anybody's going to come and do a Billy Corgan impression, I'm pressing stop. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, where all this? No, we're not doing it. Uh, but the, the, <laughs> not like, like, you, like the, the, there are elements of that in here as well. So, like, you are covering a huge breadth mm. of different, of different kind of sims, but, and I know you're about to get into it. The thing that this band does really well is make it all fit. Yeah. Yep. in the song you know what I mean like so you got like at no point in any of these songs here are you sitting here going well that was one element too far yeah, yeah I'm hoping I'm speaking for us collectively um, yeah. if any disagree agree. then mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, 
what I would say about this album is, and, and kind of like some of those bands I mentioned, it, this album gets better and better on each listen. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, like those albums that you get that, that kind of instantly relax you, like this this was one of those albums for me. Like I found myself just feeling kind of immersed in this release right from the off. Um, it feels very like dreamlike. Uh, the, the kind of lightness of the guitar tone and, and that kind of hazy atmosphere just kind of kind of pulls you in and puts you in this like state of like relaxation. Um, and I think because of that, I wasn't I wasn't necessarily like paying attention to what was going on musically mm. initially. Um, I knew I liked it, but I had no real idea why. Um, but as I say, the more time you give this, the more it, it kind of starts to unfold and, and becomes apparent why it's so well done. Um, one of those reasons is really surprising though, um, and that's that's the vocals. And the reason that I say that it's surprising is this is kind of the first time the band have really fully committed to vocals in their music. Really? Yeah, so their, their first album is completely instrumental. Um, then their last album, it's called Set the Controls for the Heart of the Slums. Um, it has vocals on it, but it's like the odd kind of vocal phrase or a kind of line here and there. Um, it's very, very minimal. Um, I would say it, it still feels almost kind of like an instrumental album. Um, mm. But on this one, uh, the band founder, David Cotton, he, he wrote full lyrics and performed all the vocals on the he's album. He's got a great voice. I don't know why he's not been using it on the others. <laughs> like, yeah, he's got a great voice. The, the, the difference is massive on uh, you know, adding the vocals uh, like they have on here. Um, the, the tracks now for me, like I'd listened to the, the previous albums, it, it feels definitely more complete on this one mm. compared to the last album, um, especially the, the last one, a lot of cool ideas like musically, but I felt like there was still like something missing. Um, this album, however, feels like like the complete package. Um, now we're getting like big kind of dreamy soundscapes that kind of weaves in out of like post rock and shoegaze and progressive metal, but with a sound that just kind of like it just fills your headphones, you know. Mm. Um, but on top of that, we're now obviously getting kind of well thought out melodies and harmonies that just takes those tracks to the next level. Um, not only do those kind of melodies expand their sound, but it, it kind of adds a story to go with the music and gives you more of a something to kind of grab onto. Mm. Um, there's there's more of a hook on on this release, um, more than the, the kind of previous one. Um, and it's weird though. I don't mean that in the kind of like a conventional like pop song type way like the choruses or melodies on this aren't built that way but they somehow still have an impact and still kind of pull you in um midnight marauders is a, a great example of that um where the the vocal melodies repeat kind of in the middle of the track and they just get kind of stuck in your head um and the styles on that track in particular are really interesting as well because at times it almost has like a like a 70s kind of folk type vibe mm-hmm. like the, the vocal harmonies especially kind of give off that feel um but i think i think you you nailed it early on like the this the flow of this album is just just perfect um you can tell it's all made up of individual tracks they all have their own like characteristics but it flows well as like one piece as well like it it, it never feels like uneven or, or or kind of jarring at any mm-hmm. point there's a very like very kind of like graceful like sound to it um even when they, they do venture into something a bit heavier or, or proggy um and that the prog side does come out you know and the tracks like um track five actually which i just want to you know pick a, a little bone with them about um edutainment guys so track five edutainment <laughs> i hate to break it to you but this is this is actually one of our one of our sayings um that's, that's our, it's our phrase um, we've you know we've used this on reviews in the past um, for years now. Um, yeah, I mean I'm not saying you stole it, but I'm just saying you, know. you should have put a little copyright symbol beside yeah. it. So yeah, I mean obviously <laughs> you went ahead and used it on your album, so I'll allow it. But um, <laughs> maybe going forward we could work out an arrangement, you know, where yeah, we can is, share custody. Yeah, what's going to happen? Yeah, this is where they produce a video from one of them when they were like ten, and they're like that. <laughs> edutainment is educational entertainment, and we're like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I yeah, um, it's a good, it's a fun name, and it's a good song as well. It's a really good song. Yeah, it's, it is. It's actually, it's a great track, um, and it it perfectly kind of transitions into um, "Fight for Your Right to Partial Relevance," um, which is like far more kind of like shoegaze orientated. Really leans in that melodic side of the band, um, but you know, even with all those kind of different styles at play, it never felt like 
disproportionate at any point. Like the mm-hmm. balance is just spot on. Like really, just bang on. The, the, there was nothing overpowering in that that the mix of styles. Um, I think the only only one track that um, that I had it's not a, a major issue, but um, I want to mention it because it's the, the one that kind of felt kind of the odd one out for me was um, the last track. Um, oh really? Yeah, I love Sunshine. the last track. Oh, really? I love the last track. Yeah, yeah. I really, really, really do. Uh, I great. felt like the last track. It, it feels more. It felt more in line with some of their earlier material. Um, mm-hmm. It is vocally more minimalist. Um, it's it's both clean and and ambient. Yeah, it's it's like probably one of the heaviest tracks as well when it gets mm-hmm. to those kind of heavy parts. Um, and it's got a kind of like a kind of mathy type vibe and points like. It kind of reminded me of like some of the clean guitar work from like Candiria, but not as full on as Candiria. But it had that kind of jazzy, kind of mathy type tone. Um, it's, it was the only track I felt in two minds about. Um, I wasn't sure about the placement of it. I, I don't know. I felt like it maybe would have been better suited in the middle of the album to kind of break it up. Um, it just it didn't feel like a closer to me. Mm. Um, I had a like a, that kind of let's try something different type feel uh, that yeah. you often get at the end of an album. Um, but it, I don't know, it just felt slightly misplaced for me personally. Um, that being said, the, the, the transitions from the, the clean melody into those like big like corrosive chords though, mm. I loved that, I thought that was awesome. Um, they, they really land with a huge amount of impact. Um, but you know, that aside, I, I still really enjoyed this album. Um, the production, again, brilliant as well. Very kind of natural and organic sounding. I thought the, the production really elevated the band's style on the album. Um, what about you guys, Duncan? What do you think? Well, I'm glad that you quantified there a three piece. Actually, looking at the album artwork, there's only three of them, so I should have been able to work that out for myself. <laughs> but uh, I'd like all I know right now is Brad's like that. He has learned nothing. He was listening to this while scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> Brad, if you are listening to this uh, back for whatever reason, um, I, I tried not to. Um, <laughs> tried not to. Uh, yeah, I, I thought this was great. This to me is a really endearing listen. Um, I listened to this far more than I listened to the other album we're going to review. Today. Mm-hmm. Not because I disliked the other one, um, but just because I found this one, that that reward value on the re-listen I mm-hmm. think is really apt. I, I think every time I come back to it, there was a, a vocal hook or there was a bass lick because we never really spoke about that. There are three pieces and every like you can identify absolutely everything here. But at times the, the the bass player is just he's leading the charge and the guitars are kind of pulling back from it. And it really, 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 really works with our sound. I think the and a band that clearly not only have a good understanding or a great understanding actually of of the composition of an album, but how to create movements in music mm. um, and how that doesn't necessarily need to be of a certain formula or a certain style and I think that's where they become their most interesting it's where you start to feel like you said before you start to feel like you're am I going into prog territory now and you, mm. you just go in there but it's all, it's all like sliding into a warm bath and no point do you ever feel startled by anything they do mm. in fact I, I, even with the heavier moments this album it almost kind of almost allows you to be sedate when listening to it. Like, there's no point here that is like you get a whiplash moment of where the fuck did that come from. Mm. It just it takes its time. It gets it gets to all the the movements and the music really really well. Vocally, this is an absolute joy to listen to. He is yeah. he is an unusual tone for this sort of music. It's in a, it's in a kind of it's in a, a kind of mid to high range. Um, but it's very, 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 very clean, and it's very warm sounding, and it just it's it, from a textural point of view. Um, if this is something they've not utilised before, I, I implore them not to go back to being an instrumental act after this because mm. it, it it made this whole thing. I can't imagine listening to this without the vocals. Yeah. Um. It just it, it was equally as important as anything else on the record. Um. I think production overall is great. Mm-hmm. We've already mentioned that. Love the flow of the songs. I've been pairing this album. Uh, so, uh, you know how like, you, you pair a nice cheese with a, a like a particular port? It's because we're getting near Christmas so I can say these things and my mouth can start to water. But you order a, bo- a bottle of wine with the lobster, Dave, you know what I mean? You pair these things up rightly. Mm-hmm. This pairs 
incredibly well with the King Woman album. Ooh, interesting. Listen to them back to back, and mm-hmm. I suggest you go King Woman first, and then at the seven, nines, and tens. If you want to bring yourself down, if you want to get gloomy, go the other way. But those albums, she has surprisingly a lot of techniques. Mm. Um, and there's a, another vocalist who has a very unique sound and tone that you know yeah. fits really well with the music. So I've been pairing up that a lot, and that's why that last track works for me so much on this one. Sunshine reminds me a lot of the the kind of almost um, right. We're go- we're doing something different on this last track mm. of um, the last song on King Woman, which I can never remember. <laughs> um, Paradise Lost. Um, like it, it reminds me a lot of that, and that you, you kind of go off on a different journey, and by the end, it feels like it, like the end of Sunshine feels like a close, even whether or not. You think the song's positioned best, like when the last last beats are hitting in, it feels like we've brought something to 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 a, a, to a natural conclusion, to an end. Uh, yeah, this is fucking great. This is another album that uh, you know has come from a band I've never heard of before that are doing something really really interesting. That all I want is people to listen to. Mm. Um, you said they're from Canada. Yeah. Right. So these guys are Canada's answer to. Uh, boss Galoid without being as fun quirky and and, and cheeky as those chappies <laughs> are in a lot of respects it has an earthy tone and mixes lots of styles uh, brings in elements of, of kind of sludge and prog but isn't scared to make things very catchy uh, mm. it's, it's a great album yeah Kyle yeah what did you, what did you make of this it's alright good album yeah <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> just a pile on basically with what you guys said i think the flow of the album is one thing that struck me right away it reminded me a little bit tiny bit in the flow and structure and everything of nine inch nails the fragile because that was structured perfectly and this also is <laughs> even though it's a double album and it's got a lot more going on this one is absolutely just it's great i've listened to it so many times since they sent to it it's been one of those albums that's been on repeat like i've sat down and listened to it properly i've had it on the background i've had it in the car you know it's been on quite a lot, and I think you're right. The reward on re-listens is, just grows with every re-listen. There's always all this something that you haven't picked up before, and mm. something like the production's great, really good, really natural sounding, very down to earth, and sort of you know, not too much fuckery here and there, and not any weird studio techniques either, like you know, panning weird sounds and stuff. It's just like this is what we write, and this is I love mm. it. it. Sounds really good. It's interesting to hear that the previous stuff was instrumental. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's like, yeah, like I can't, I can't think of how. I mean, there's a lot of instrumental passages and phrases and passes through this album where the vocals take his back seat. But I can't yeah. imagine the whole thing being like that. The mm. vocals bring so much to this. I'm so glad they decided to do that. But no, I had a great time listening to this, and I will continue to listen to it. It's on my, uh, it's on my repeat listens list. Mm. Let's put it that way. So uh, yeah, nice. good stuff. Excellent. Um, so, ratings. For this new album from Seven Nines and Tens, um, yeah, um, yeah, I think I think I'm going to go four point five in this. Um, I did I did really enjoy it. Um, I, I, the last track was just a kind of personal thing, but um, I think for the most part, it is an album that I'll probably go back to. Um, and as you said, Kyle, it's one that you can actually you can have on in the background. It still sounds great. But when you're kind of immersing yourself in it with the like big headphones in a, in a dark room, that's just like the perfect time to sit and listen to this. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to go 4.5. I did enjoy this, yeah. Uh, Duncan? For once you are right, Dave. <laughs> 4.5 album. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. As a guy who doesn't sleep much at all, um, I can attest to dark room nighttime listening. Sims fucking wicked. 4.5. Yeah. Nice. Kyle? I can't believe this is going to happen. <laughs> Four point five. Yay! <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, so this one is out in January. Um, it drops on January seventh on Willow Tip Records. Um, if you want to check out the band, um, I'll put a little link in the description below. Um, you can check them out. It's facebook.com forward slash seven nines and tens. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be links to the to their pre-order or band camp or whatever you can check out as well. Um, let us know what you think once you've heard any of the tracks. I think they've already dropped um, a single. So um, let us know what you think. Happy to hear your thoughts and opinions on it. That is the review.